Hay prices are skyrocketing right now. Do you want to save some money on feeding your cows or any of your animals this year? In this video we have 13 different ways that you can save some money this year on your huge hay bill. I promise you there's going to be at least one point here you're not already doing where you're going to save some money. So stay through to the end. We're going to do our best to save you as much money as we can. With the price of hay going up, you got to change some things you're doing. We're here to help. I know a lot of you out there probably have some ways that you're saving money on your hay purchases. So comment below, maybe one of you can teach me a tip. Uh, let's get into the first tip today. Uh, this first few tips we have are all about how you purchase your hay. Point number one I have for you is buy hay all year long. Instead of buying it in only one month and filling your you know, hay barn in one month of the year, spread it out. And the reason why is you'll find, for example, before hay season begins, there's farmers who are looking to clear out last year's hay, you might find a deal. We were able to get a deal on some older hay this year to start filling up our hay loft. This year's first cutting hay kind of happened before this horrible drought began. So it was kind of before the prices really started going up. So if you spread your buying out through the year, that means when things get bad, like during the drought that we're facing right now, which is causing a lot of hay prices to go up, you don't have to buy as much hay. You can buy a little bit less and hopefully wait for times to get better. So spread it out over the year. So tip number two I have is Definitely don't wait to the time of year where everybody in your area is buying hay. For us, that's like October, November, right before winter where we live. Everybody starts to go onto Craigslist and look for hay being sold. And that's gonna drive the price up too, supply and demand. So buy all year round and don't wait till the month when everyone else is looking for hay to fill your hay loft. Okay. Next tip I have for you is buy in bulk. Every time you get a delivery or you go and pick up hay, you're spending fuel or the delivery guy's spending fuel, time to load. So instead of buying like 10 bales on the back of a pickup truck, rent a trailer or borrow a trailer or have the guy who's bringing your hay fill a trailer as high as he can. That'll save you some money on delivery charges. And oftentimes if you tell a hay farmer, hey, I'm gonna buy as much as I can get from you, give me a deal, usually they'll give you a little bit of a discount. Now maybe you're thinking, oh, farmers have it tough, why are you trying to nickel and dime them? Well, my next tip is actually gonna be really good for the hay farmer. If you have a farmer that you usually buy your hay from, and I recommend you find a good source and you stick with them, oftentimes you can make their life a little bit easier by buying hay right off of the hay wagon. And again, if it makes their life easier, maybe they'll be willing to work with you on price a little bit. When farmers go out to their field and harvest hay, they wind up forming the bales, whether they're square bales or round bales, and then they'll throw them on a hay wagon to transfer them, where they then unload them and put them in some sort of barn for storage. But farmers love to fill that hay wagon, and instead of driving it somewhere and unloading it, only to reload it again and deliver it, they'd much rather just send that wagon out as soon as it's full to your farm where you can unload it for them and have it ready for them to fill again. So save that farmer a step, tell them, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I'd like to buy some hay right off of the hay wagon. The next tip that will save you for sure is to buy bigger hay bales. So if you're right now a small homestead and you've only been buying little square hay bales, usually your square bales cost the most per pound when compared to either large square bales or round bales. Now, if you're too small of a homestead to go through a round bale or a large square bale to the point where the hay is spoiling, then this is not a good tip for you. If you have enough livestock where you could go through like a round bale in a couple of days or one of those big square bales in a couple of days, 
you'll get cheaper hay per pound when you purchase round bales or square bales. If you're not sure, the best advice I have for you is to take a year and try it. That's what we did here when we weren't sure about how round bales would work for us. Instead of buying all round bales for the year, we bought mostly small square bales and we got a couple round bales and we experimented and we learned, yep, round bales work great for us. Of course, we're at the point now with we have a lot of cattle. Round bales is pretty much the only way we feed our cattle and we do see a significant savings when feeding round bales compared to square bales. Plus, it's a lot less handling bales, which is less labor. That's always a great thing. We buy all our hay from a local farm. We get to talk to the farmers, work with the farmers. You actually can see our hay being made. Jack and his family make our hay. Hi, I'm Study Viewers. I made a short video on how we make our hay. Hope you enjoy. Jack has a YouTube channel, so click right there. You might remember Jack, he was on our channel a long time ago. He started a YouTube channel and it got shut down. The poor guy, uh, all his hard work, all his subscribers were lost. So I'd love it if you give Jack a follow. He's working really hard at making good videos. Click right there to head over to his channel. If we could get him 500 subscribers by the end of today, that would just be awesome. So go see how our hay is made over at Jack's channel. And next we're gonna tell you how you can save some money on your hay and how you use it. But these cows are getting very impatient, so I have to let them out onto their new pasture. Then we'll talk more hay. And boys. And boys, come on. how you store your hay. This one is gonna save you a lot of money when it comes to the money you spend actually being worth it in the product you have to feed your animals. If you buy 100 hay bales and you lose about 50% of your hay to mold and spoilage, that's gonna be a huge cost to your homestead. You see behind me, we have up in the top of our barn a hay loft. The hayloft is an awesome place to store hay. It keeps it dry out of the elements. We're not gonna get any mold or any mildew. But you don't necessarily need a hayloft to keep your hay safe. You'll also see we have round bales that we have wrapped. And even if you can't wrap your round bales, even the way that you stack them and where you place them can actually keep them from spoiling. So instead of stacking a, a round bale with the flat on top, Stack it so that the water rolls off the curved edges. That's another great tip if you don't have good storage. Figure out how to keep your hay bales as dry as possible and keeping them up off the ground will also prevent spoilage on that hay that contacts the soil. So elevated, dry, you're gonna have the least amount of hay spoiled. All that money you spend on good feed will be worth it. These naughty little goats are notorious hay wasters. I don't think there's an animal that wastes more hay than a goat. And that's where this next tip comes in handy. How you feed your animals their hay will really cut down on your hay loss or your hay waste. So here you see we have what is a, a slow release hay feeder. Uh, this is designed to have very small holes where the goats have to pull their hay through. They have to work for it, which means the more they have to work to get the hay, the less they're gonna waste. If it's really easy, if we just throw a bale of hay down on the ground for them, they'll waste about half the bale. Whereas with this, there's a lot less waste. Also, you notice this feeder is covered. So while the goats are feeding through this bale, it's, getting not, it's not gonna get rained on, not a lot of hay will get ruined. This hay feeder works really good for our little goats. It would work awful for our cows. 
So depending on what animal you have, find what kind of slow release hay feeders are best for your animals. Uh, whether we, if you're working for cows, you might find something that cradles the hay bale and covers it. Uh, if you're working with other animals like sheep, you can feed them out of a, a bag, a net that's designed to slowly release the hay. Basically find what's best for your particular animal that will waste the least amount of hay. Now of course there's always going to be some waste no matter what you're doing. That's where the next tip comes in. What are you doing about the waste? You should follow us on Instagram because when I make these videos, I actually ask everybody who follows on Instagram for input. They help me decide what video to make. Today I asked, how do you save money on hay? And here's a couple great tips I actually got from our audience on Instagram. Jesse says, I help my hay supplier put their hay in their barn and they take so much off my hay bill. So that's a great tip. Add a little bit of labor, help to the nearby farmer. Maybe you'll get a discount. Tinstone Cattle Company, who we bought our bull brig from, uh, says buy a head out of the field or at, right at cutting. Prices go up as need goes up. They also added as many round bales as possible. Keep it as protected as possible. Lance Steele said by not having a cow yet. <laughs> Rub it in, Lance. <laughs> If you want to follow us on Instagram, there'll be a link here or below. You can follow us on Instagram. The hay that we feed down at the barn to animals that gets wasted has to be picked up, then brought into some kind of compost pile where it then will be turned into compost, picked up again and moved. And in each one of those moves and the locations that that hay is sitting and rotting, we're losing nutrients, we're losing the value in even that wasted hay. It's much better if you can to feed your animals their hay where the hay that is wasted will also feed your soil, feed your land. And that's why you see we have these round bales up here in our field. This coming fall and winter when we start hay feeding, we're gonna roll out our round bales like we did last year. These round bales will actually unroll right on top of our pastures during the fall and in the winter like we did last year. And that way any of the hay that is wasted will decompose, the nutrients will go back into our pastures directly. And all of those nutrients, all of that decomposition that goes into the ground will feed our pastures. We won't lose any of it. So the little bit of waste we do have, it will actually become the fertilizer that feeds our pastures. Now the the third area that we can actually save some money when it comes to hay has to do with what you see behind me. Something that we've been doing for the last couple of years to save money when it comes to our hay expense is to supplement our hay during the season where grass isn't growing. We do this through two different ways. The first is this, growing a stockpile of pasture. So basically this time of year, August, we're gonna mow or graze everything down. And then during this period of year, it'll actually grow back. And what grows back will be palatable, nutritious, and healthy for the cows. And we'll leave that clear through the fall and the winter. We actually were grazing stockpile last year, right up into January. Imagine not having to feed your cows any hay right into January for where we are, that's the middle of winter that really cut down on our hay expense. So stockpile some pasture. In addition to your pasture, the next tip I have for you is to plant some grains that will benefit your animals while they're foraging. So here we have some sunflowers. Now these sunflowers, they're beautiful. They're wonderful to see out in our pasture. We love planting sunflowers. We actually planted them this year after we had heavily grazed this area down to nothing, we direct seeded them. My father-in-law has a no-till drill. He came through and he seeded sunflowers. But this is the cool thing. The patches you see behind me came from that no-till drill. This patch that I'm standing in right now was actually seeded by last year's animals grazing through the sunflowers that were planted the previous year. So if you feed like, for example, ruminants, some sunflowers, seeds will pass through them 
and be planted for you. This patch was planted by our pigs and our cows. Now you may be wondering, is sunflower good for your cattle or good for your pigs? We actually have a great video that you can check out from another channel where he actually tested the forage quality of his sunflowers and he said nothing that he grows on his farm was better than the sunflowers at this current state. So if we graze our cattle through these sunflowers, they'll get a great forage and they'll plant next year's sunflower patch. High quality grain, gonna help feed them through the lean times and a self-replicating system. This is an awesome thing that we're experimenting more and more with on this homestead to try to be more self-sufficient and not have to buy so much hay. Last category that I have for you today, how you can save money, two more tips for you, is by starting a homestead business. If you haven't done this, you're missing out on a couple great ways to save money when it comes to purchasing stuff like hay. When you run a business, purchases you make for that business become tax write-offs. So for example, all this hay that I purchase for my livestock, I can save money that I would be spending in taxes. Now it doesn't dollar for dollar equal what you have to pay in taxes. So if I spend a thousand dollars in hay, I don't save a thousand dollars in taxes. But I do save a significant amount of money every year with write-offs for my business. If you have to spend this money anyway, you might as well not have to spend that money on taxes. So become a homestead business and use this as a write-off. The very last tip I have for you is when you become a business, especially a farm, depending on where you live and what the laws are, you may have some exemptions in sales tax because of being a farm. As a farm in the state of Pennsylvania, we do not pay sales tax. That's 6% of our purchases. We don't have to pay if it's an expense related to the farm. So where I might have to on a $100 pile of hay pay $6 to the government in sales tax, I don't have to do that if it's for my farm. So that's another great way to save money. And here's my warning. You should not start a homestead business just to save money on tax write-offs and sales tax because it won't work out if you don't have a really good way to make money from your homestead. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about at the upcoming Homesteaders of New England conference, how you can make money as a homesteader. So if you want to come and see that, that's the only way you're gonna get to see that talk. They're not gonna show it on YouTube. They're not gonna broadcast it over the web. You gotta come in person to the Homesteaders of New England conference. Click here to get your tickets. I really hope to see you there. If you're coming, let me know in the comments below. I'll look out for you, I'd love to meet you. And we can talk business ideas and how you can make some money on your homestead.